four, four and five, and then between two and three, everyone choose two or three. Finding the slope between these two points, so that would be one, two, y equals mx plus b. Add in my slider, change my slope to a negative 1, and move my b until it goes through those two points. Desmos, if you didn't do it algebraically, finding the slope and then using your point slope. Okay. 
Once we finish um, 41 through 45, that answer sheet will be another formative, and that will be the last chart by answer sheet we do this year. Questions on any of those? Look at the notes on your desk. While you're practicing, you would like a practice quiz for Unit 10. Those are up here, so you can grab those that you can on Canvas. Today we're going to start Unit 11. We finish with this by Tuesday, and then start Unit 12, and then we'll just have SLL review. Go ahead and write this information in. So in our radicals, the nth root of a number a can be written as the radical expression the nth root of a, where the n is our index. Then we have the radical and anything underneath the radical is direction. If there is no index, no number on the outside, assume that number is 2. If you were solving with radicals, you would get a positive and a negative version of whatever the answer is, but in this case, we're only going to look at the positives. There are two different ways to go about simplifying this. I'm going to show you both. You pick whichever method makes more sense to you and you use that. So the first method is using our perfect squares. In order to do that, we need to know our perfect squares. So if you know them already, great, and you can say them out loud. If not, you can put them in your calculator and do 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, keep going. So what would 1 squared be? 1, 2 squared, 4, 3 squared, 9, 5, 4, sorry, I skipped another 4 squared, 5 squared, 6, 7, 8, Four, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So, nerd, wow, I don't know what I just said. Anyway, knowing the first twelve is a good amount to know. Knowing the first fifteen would put you at an even better advantage with most of your simplifying radicals. Knowing the first 20 should give you everything. But if you just know the first 12, you also have a calculator to find the others. So if you are given a perfect uh, square root, you're just going to simplify it using that. So like the square root of 16 is what? And that would be it. Or like a number 2, the square root of 121 is what? 11. And I would multiply that by 2. If you got something like this, we don't have 289 up here, but take the square root of 289 to figure out what that is. And then we can multiply 6 and 17, which is 1. So if you have a perfect square, you just simplify that, whatever that answer is, is that. But most of the time you won't see a perfect square. So the directions show one of the methods of how we could do this. 
So using the perfect square method, we're going to look for the highest perfect square we can divide 32 by. If you're not sure, start dividing by each of these numbers, but look for the highest one. Which one would work? 32, we're dividing this by four words, but it's not the highest. 16. So I'm going to separate this into the square root of 16, and 16 times what gives me 32? And then I know the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 2 cannot be simplified. So that would be my final answer. 4 times the square root of 2. With all of these, you can double check this in the calculator. I'll do that next thing. Do the square root of 32. You'll get some decimal. That's fine. And then 4 times the square root of 2. And you get that same decimal. And you would do the same thing in decimals. And as long as the decimals match, you know you did that right. Questions on the perfect square method so far before we do um, the other method? So the other method is maybe you're not sure, maybe it's a higher number and you're not sure and you just think of two factors. Or let's say we went with four. So four is a perfect square that we can divide it by, but it's not the highest. So what would happen in this case is I know the square root of 4 is 2, but I would have to break down 8 as much as possible, either using the perfect square method or just looking at factors in general. I know the factors of 8 are 4 and 2. So if I want to use the square root, I could do that, and that would become 2. I have still that square root of 2, and I would multiply the 2's that were left to get that. Or you could have just looked at the factors and not the square roots. By just looking at the factors, you want to break this down as much as possible until the numbers are prime. So I know 2 times 2 would give me 4. 4 times 2 would give me um, 8. And then I have 2 times 2 again. And I'm looking for all of the groups of two, pairs of twos. So I have one group of two that gets to come out, and you would just write that as whatever the number is, but just once. And then I have a second one, and then I have this one that would be by itself. And then you would multiply and simplify. So if you like the completely breaking it down by the factors, or maybe partially breaking it down, or using breaking it down with the perfect squares or just the perfect squares. Use whichever method makes more sense to you. Do you have any questions on either of these before we continue? Okay. We're going to do both methods one more time just so you see that it works and then you guys can choose. For number six, find the highest perfect square that goes into 180. 13. So if you're looking for something you can divide 180 by. And the square root of 36 is what? 6. 
And that would be my final answer. 6 times the square root of 5. Because 5 can't be broken down anymore. If I were to break this down, let's say I use, I know 10 times 18 gives me 180. And I would just keep breaking that down until I see all the factors. So I know 5 times 2 is 10. Um, let's do 6 and 3. 5 can't be broken down more. 6 can. So then I have a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s that would come out and that 5 would stay by itself. And then you would simplify. So again, if you like the breaking it down method, go for that. If you would rather just stick with the perfect squares, also go for that. Do we have any questions on that one? Let's skip down to number 10. Do you want to use perfect squares or breaking that down? So then find the highest perfect square we can divide 54 by. always have to make sure it's the most simplified. If I were to break the 6 down again, its factors are 2 and 3. Neither is a pair, neither would come up. So that would just stay underneath the rectangle. So then my final answer would be 6 times the square root of 6. Okay, let's skip down to number 11. And I typed in 6 times the square root of 6. That's we get the same as Do you have any questions on that one or want to see any others on that page before we move on? Thank 
there's an imperfect square. Sixty four and two. The square root of sixty four is eight. So what would our final answer be? questions on how we can simplify radicals from a square radical. Knowing the first 10 will get you a good amount of things of what you need to know. So if you're not sure what these are in your calculator, you can do the number and use this carrot, hat, whatever you want to call this, and raise it to the third power. So one cube would be one. Two cube, eight. Three, four. You could know more than this, but this is a good amount to know. Um, just like normal, if you have a perfect cube, you're just going to simplify that. So I'm going to jump to 16. The cube root of 343 would be what? 7. 7. And we would multiply 5 and 7 to get 31. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is that we can take the negative of a cube root. We cannot take the negative of a square root in this class. And that's what you can. So when you see that negative, you can do one of two things. Either just take the cube root of that negative number or move the negative out front. So it's less to deal with, less to worry about. And then figure that out. The cube root of 27 is... So that final answer would be negative three. All right, so now we're going to simplify some non-perfect cube groups. Starting with 19, is 40 a perfect cube? No. So I'm going to show you both methods, the breaking down and the um, perfect cube method. Find the highest perfect cube that goes into this. Be careful that you're not confusing perfect squares with perfect cubes. Let's start dividing 40 by 1, by 8, by 27.
and I would just leave this as two times the cube root of five. If you want to leave that little space in there like I did, or you can use parentheses around the cube root to check yourself in the calculator. Your cube root is in math. Number four. The calculator will put in front of these for you. Let's skip to, I'm sorry, go. I just need to break this down. So let's say I do 4 and 10. And I'm just looking for factors. I'm just going to write down all the factors. And I'm going to break these down completely until I can't anymore. Then because this is a cube group, you want groups of 3. So that group of 3 would come out of the rack pool, and whatever is left would stay inside. We'll do both methods one more time for number 21. For the perfect cube, find the highest perfect cube that goes into 432 that we can divide it by. Okay, go to C and 2. The cube root of 216 is. So then if I multiply those, my final answer is 12 times the cube root of 2. Well, let's say I was breaking that down, and I don't want to use 216 and 2. Find me two other factors of 432. We'll start dividing by 3, by 4, and 6, 7, 2, 1. So give me two factors of 48. Six and eight. We know three and three would give us nine. Two and three would give us six. Four and two would give us eight. And then two and two would give us four. So looking at all of these different things, I have a group of three right there. I have a group of three there. Oh, two. So we have the two already out front. And then we have a group of threes, a group of twos, and then the two that was left. And two times three times two would give us twelve. Do we have any questions, confusions about the perfect cube method or the breaking that down method? Are there any others we want to see? Excuse me, that we skipped over before we move on to the next thing. You want to use perfect cubes or breaking this down. You can either leave the negative out or take it, um, sorry, leave the negative in or take it out. And then find the highest perfect cube that goes into 250.
the cube root of 125 is so then our final answer would be 10 times the cube root of 2. I'm going to double check this one in the calculator and then the, this one will be the last one. Any other questions on this page or we move on? Not only do we have to simplify radicals with numbers, but we also have to do it with variables. So there are three different ways that you can do this. Whichever way you like, use that. I'm going to show you all three. One is using this rule. If m is a multiple of 2, we're going to use the rule a to the m over 2. If it's not a multiple of 2, we're going to find the closest number that would be a multiple of 2, um, write that, and then separate the one remaining. So we'll do this one, and then I'll show you the other two rules, the other two ways to do so for example one, if I'm using the rule, this is a multiple of two. So I could say this is the same thing as x to the two over two, which would simplify to be what? One. One. So that would just be x and that would be your final answer. I could use this second method where it's kind of like this, but it's not writing it out like this. I'm thinking about the index, the two, the invisible two on the outside. Two goes under two how many times? Once. And with nothing left over. If there was something left over, that would be inside the radical. Your final way to do this is x squared is the same thing as x and x. You could expand it. And this would be one pair of x's that comes up with nothing left. So whichever way makes the most sense to you, do that. We're going to do number three, skip two, and then go on. So I'm going to show all three methods one more time, since this one is an odd exponent. So using the rule, I know that um, this is not a multiple of two, but what's the closest number that is? Number does two go into that is close to five? Four. Four. So I can change this to the square root of n to the fourth times the square root of just that last one remaining. And then I could use that rule. This is a multiple of two, so that would be n to the four over two. And this would stay the same. Radical n. And if I simplify this, 4 over 2 would give me 2. So that would be n squared times the square root of n. This one probably has the most steps. If I use the second method, thinking about that index, 2 goes into 5 how many times? So that would be n squared with how much left over? One. So the n, um, if I were to multiply those, I get four. So that's why we can leave it as n squared. And then that would be your final answer. Or you could expand it. And I have two pairs of n's that would come outside of the radical. and then one that would stay inside, and then that would simplify to the same thing. So however you want to do that, you 
do that. I'm just going to focus on using this method because I don't have a lot of space to do everything else. Do we have any questions on that so far? So then in number four, you'll get a mixture of numbers and variables. You want to split that up first. So you have the square root of 40 and the square root of a to the 19. So you're working about two separate things separately. I'm just going to use perfect squares instead of breaking it down. If you want to use breaking it down or any of these other methods, go for that. Find the highest perfect square that we can divide by 40. So perfect square, not perfect cube. Divide that by 40, 40 divided by that. So think about your perfect squares and the highest one that we can divide 40 by. Back to your list of perfect squares, do that. Divide it by one square, by two squares, by three squares. Neither of the perfect squares. If you were breaking it down, that would work. Four and ten. And Two goes into nineteen how many times? So it goes in nine times, so that would be a to the ninth with how many left over? We have to multiply two and nine and then see how much is left to get to nineteen. There would be one inside the radical. The square root of four is two. So then I'm going to start to rearrange. Everything outside goes together. So two a to the ninth. Everything inside stays together. Times the square root of ten. So in Desmos, you can double check this. Put the original and put the final in using a slider and check to see if the decimals match. In your calculator, you can only check to see if the number part matches, not the very close. Do you have any questions, confusions on that? We're going to do a few more on this page and then go on to key group. So let's do number five. Separate each piece. The square root of 25 is what? Five. Five. Two goes into six how many times? So that would be x to the third, sorry. And then 2 goes into 13 how many times? 6. six. So it would be 5 to the 6 with how much left over? 1. So on the outside, we have 5x to the third, y to the sixth. On the inside, times the square root of y. Any questions or questions on that one? Um, 
let's do... I think that's one, number nine. Go ahead and separate each thing. Find the highest perfect square that goes under Two up here, and I know x has an exponent of one. Does two go into one? No. So I can't do anything with that. This is just going to stay the square root of x. And then two goes into four how many times?
and see how many times three goes into that exponent, or you can expand it. So for this one, using the rule, this is a multiple of three. This would be x to the three over three, which would simplify to be what? If I'm using the rule I have been doing, three goes into three how many times? Once with nothing left over, so that would just be x. Or you could expand it. And I have a group of three that would come out with nothing left over. We're going to skip 14 and do 15 and do those same three rules. If I have, if I'm using this rule, I know 3 doesn't go into 7, but what's the closest number that 3 does go into? Does 3 go into 2? Oh, so, so it would go into it twice. Yes, I understand what you're saying. So this would be 6 over 3. I'm sorry. I just did this up x to the 6, the square root of x to the 6 times x to the first, this first. If I'm using the rule, and then that would be x to the 6 over 3, which would be 2. If I'm thinking how many times does 3 go into 7, it would be twice, with one left over, or you could expand it. That would give us two groups of three with one left. So again, whichever method you like best, do that. For space, I'm going to use the one we've kind of been doing. And let's try 16. Just like our square roots separate everything, make sure you have the index on the outside of each piece. And then find the highest perfect cube that goes into 40. have negative 3 times the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 5. 3 goes into 16 how many times? 5. What's how much left over? So that would be w to the fifth times the cube root of this 1w. The cube root of 8 is have negative 3 times 2 times w to the fifth times the cube root of 5w so that our final answer would be negative 6 w to the fifth times the cube root of 5w. Do we have any questions, confusions? There. Look at the remaining. What others did we want to see? Do you go over and have questions about?
there. And we will be working on the following. You guys have Delta Math on this due Friday. Previous Delta Math that you need to be working on to include your perfect best fit is also due Friday. And then things that were due last week. You could be working on your test nav that's due on Tuesday, your day labs, or more practice than you took.